Hey guys, how's it going? It's Saturday morning. It's my uh, first free day from uh, my first full week of working for UPS again for the third year. and feeling a little bit sore today, uh, so I'm kind of worried that in the next couple weeks or so I'm going to be back to having ice packs on my knee and everything else probably, but that's okay. But I said that I wanted to get a lot done on the website, and I was hoping to get like a schedule and do some more studies while I was working. I'm thinking that, unfortunately, I'm probably not going to get very much done in this month. But then again, it is December. A lot of people are busy. You know, it's a time that I should probably relax anyways. So I'll get done whatever I can. And uh, then, you know, once work ends into January and the new year, then I can start working really hard again on the website and making videos. There's so many studies that I have to put out. I just have to get around to finishing them up. And, you know, and I'm also looking into all this eschatology stuff now and changing, you know, my positions. Uh, but anyway, so yeah. So I wouldn't expect too much, I guess, for the rest of this month. But I'll, whatever, you know, whenever I feel like getting something out there, I guess. But I'm probably just going to be relaxing for the most part because it works so it's physically exhausting. And, you know, I don't want to be physically exhausted and then mentally exhaust myself because, you know, it does take a lot out of me getting into the studies and stuff, too. I have to take my time and really focus. Anyways, I want to share this with you. This looks like an awesome article, and I don't know if I agree with everything on here, but this is the kind of stuff that I love. It's like a detailed article that gives verses. And I want to take this article and all the verses that are presented here and the arguments, and I want to put it on the... KJV forum and uh, construct my own study and add even more if I can. Um, but you can look this up. It's on the Preterist Archive. You can look up, you know, Google The Resurrection of the Flesh by Kurt M. Simmons. Or you don't have to go to Google. You can go to DuckDuckGo.com too. That's another search engine, which is more private than Google. Uh, but I just thought I'd share that. Or you can, you know, type in the URL that's at the top here, www.preteristarchive.com slash hyper slash 2003 underscore Simmons underscore resurrection dash flesh dot HTML. So this is talking about the resurrection of the flesh and it's talking about how it is false. There's this popular teaching that I even believed once that in the future before the supposed millennial kingdom that... Um, the church or the body of Christ will be raised physically and enter into the kingdom, okay, and have like physical bodies. Um, but it's false. The scripture doesn't teach that. I've, I've already mentioned this a few times, and specifically how Paul talks about how, you know, there's different bodies and, you know, we're sown physically and raised spiritually, or, you know, sown in corruption, raised in incorruption. Basically, basically, that's what he says. Maybe not word for word, but... So, you know, you can see pretty much in that passage exactly refutes this idea of a, of a future physical re resurrection. Our hope is, you know, our spiritual bodies being raised, okay? But this article goes over all kinds of stuff. It starts off with how the early church got confused. Um, so I'll skip that. That's interesting still. I actually printed this all out and with the comments that are on it and everything, and it was about 17 pages. And I love stuff like this. I love these extensive studies that give you all the verses. And... Um, you know, I have tubs full of things I've printed out because I like to print them out and read it on paper and I can make marks on it and all that and hand it to somebody else if I need to in the future or whatever to help them study. Unfortunately, I mean, it's not really unfortunate, but I have a huge folder full of like pre-trib rapture stuff, like refuting the post-trib rapture, refuting the mid-trib and, 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 you know these other positions and stuff and supporting the pre-trib and, and all kinds of other end time stuff that I have. And now, you know, I know a lot of that's wrong, but it still helped me. Uh, I can see how they're wrong in their own individual ways. You know, I already rejected the post-trib and the mid-trib, but now, you know, I reject the mid-trib because I reject the rapture as a whole. 
but the rapture did seem to have some virtues, how it talked about, you know, Christ could come at any time, except now I understand that to mean, you know, at the moment of death, basically. And, uh, let's see. Now, he refutes this stuff point by point. There was some, I wanna, I'm just going to kind of read over this. I haven't read over it all myself. I'm just going to do it with this video. There were some things I read on here that was good that I wanted to share. Let me see. How does it start off? It starts off saying, Since physical bodies are not a part of the first resurrection, what basis is there to believe they will be part of the second resurrection of the soul to heaven? To the soul in heaven. The resurrection of the dead is a question fraught with difficulty for many. Preterists maintain that the re resurrection was and is non-physical, consisting in the spirit, not the body of man. Others, including post-millennials, believe that the resurrection is essentially fleshly that there can be no resurrection apart from physical bodies rising from their graves. In this article, we want to examine the idea of the resurrection of the flesh to see if it accords with the scriptures. We believe a candid study will demonstrate that the resurrection submits or subsists in the immaterial realm of the spirit, not the flesh. Okay. And it talks about how it's all tied in with the rapture doctrine and everything, and it pretty much is. And this is another thing that I want to get across here, is the people who are still rejecting, you know, um, you know, for me denying the rapture, and, and they still want to hold on to that and stuff. And I understand that. Um, you know, it's very deceiving. You know, I believed it before. But I'll hope that you'll come to the same conclusion I have. If you continue to study this, you have to study what does the Word of God say, okay? Not what you what you've heard or what you feel or what you want to be true, we have to get our truth from the Word of God, number one. And secondly, you know, if you keep studying these things, you're going to see, like, the, the, the rapture doctrine is like a whole system of things. You know, it teaches the rapture, it teaches the millennial kingdom, it teaches that, you know, at the rapture there's going to be this judgment where Christians are going to, you know, they could lose rewards or whatever. There's going to be a future bodily resurrection. All these things are tied in together. And what happened with me is I started to see them crumble one by one. Okay, and that's what I hope will happen to you. You will see this. You know, I saw, you know, that the, this judgment seat of Christ, this, this uh, thing that's supposed to happen after the rapture where Christians are judged based on their works and they can gain rewards or they can lose rewards, is absolutely false. Because every believer's reward is because of what Christ did. The only way that anyone can, you know, be saved or, you know, inherit the kingdom is because of what Christ did. So to say that we can add to that by our works or to say that any of that can be lost, like that's basically heretical, okay? Uh, we're all, all believers are going to get the same reward. It's all based on what Christ did. And we should be thankful for that and praise God for that. Um, you know, the, these these messages or these verses that might seem to teach a loss of reward, it's talking about uh, not being saved. Okay, it's not talking about losing salvation, but it's saying that, uh, you know, there might be some of you who think that you have this reward or whatever. You don't really have it um, if you haven't really trusted in Christ. And if you if you don't continue that, then then you don't have that reward, basically. So, I don't know, I can't, don't want to explain that and mess that up too much, but, <laughs> but there is no loss of rewards for people who are actually born again, okay? And there's nothing extra that we can earn that Christ already didn't earn for us. So, so one by one, I saw things like that crumble, and I said, okay, well, this kind of affects the whole thing, so, you know, what's next? And, you know, and I ended up looking directly at the rapture passages, and it took me a while, and, I, and I've kind of figured out, and once I've seen that other people believe the same way, that this is talking about the resurrection, which happens at death, then I'm like, okay, then I, I'm going to go with this now. This this seems more consistent, more biblical, and, and everything just crumbles, and then it's like, okay, well, what about the millennial kingdom now? Okay, well, that's like symbolic somehow. So... 
It just, it, it all crumbles. But you should really look at this resurrection of the body. I think there's some really good points here, and, and I hope maybe this will be the first one that will crumble for you, and it should be a big one. Because people who believe the pre-trib rapture or, you know, any kind of premillennialism, possibly even post-millennialism or, or anything else, I don't know. Maybe just premillennialism. Anyways, they're all going to stand on this false doctrine that believers in the future are going to have their physical bodies resurrected, okay? Because it's like a part of that system. But let me see. i got to find out where I read that. Hmm... It talks about the, uh, how is it, what is it, the Westminster Confession, which a lot of people hold to, and it in the West, in the Westminster Confession, it talks about being raised physically, but I want to go down here what this article says to kind of refute that it says, notice the confused eschatology here that has the souls of the dead bypassing Hades and going immediately to heaven where they behold the face of God. Uh, let me see here. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure exactly what he's saying here. Bypassing Hades, the souls of the dead. Anyways, okay, he's bas but basically, okay, the saints go to heaven to be with God, and while they're there, they're re awaiting the redemption of their bodies, okay, <laughs> to which they are subsequently forced to return. What possible purpose could there be in re reuniting the spirits of the saints with their earthly bodies, being in a state suited to behold the face of God in perfect holiness? What is the need to clothe them again with houses of clay? Having begun in the spirit, are they made perfect by the flesh? Such is the garbled teaching of the Westminster Confession. Okay. So, I mean, I might not agree with every little thing that this article says, but basically the idea is that, you know, so we're waiting to be with the Lord, right? So we're going to spiritually be with the Lord after death. But then we're going to, but that's not complete. Then we're going to be waiting for, uh, to have our bodies again, physically. <laughs> okay, something's wrong with that. I mean, that should kind of click, like, you know, once we're with the Lord, you know, that should, that should be it. You know, we've entered into eternity. You know, like, we, we no longer, we're not longing, you know, for, for any more anything. So, I don't know. It just seems kind of odd. But anyways, let's go down here. And this is one of the major arguments that people will use right here. Uh, the major premise is that Christ was raised physically. The minor premise is that Christ was the first fruits of the resurrection. Therefore, the conclusion is our resurrection will be physical like Christ. So that's how people will try to support this argument. Even though Paul clearly says that, you know, we're sown and physically we're raised spiritually. It says it does not take a logician to see that the conclusion does not follow from the premises. Furthermore, Gentry's conclusion is based, and also I want to talk about in the future, like what it means that Christ is the first fruits. And I'm not sure that this article really gets into that, but um, it, uh, I don't know exactly about the first fruits um i read something that explained it pretty good i got it somewhere but basically the first fruits was like what the first part of the crop or something that was used to bless the rest of it so there's kind of like a different you know typographical i don't know if that's how you say it like a like a type kind of um in a different sense than what people want to make it be 
to try and support this that that the believers will be have a physical resurrection uh anyways this conclusion is based on an unimproved unproved premise there is no evidence that the term first fruits applies to man's body and much against it like virtually every other bodily resurrection recorded in scripture Jesus' resurrection first and foremost is evidentiary exactly how many times you know did Jesus do physical miracles you know open the eyes of the blind and heal the sick and everything to give a spiritual truth right so it's kind of the same with the resurrection here it was intended to serve as a demonstration of God's power and work among his people Romans 1 4 says Jesus was declared the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead in the resurrection God declared Jesus to be his son vindicating Jesus's claims during his life but this could not be accomplished without the resurrection of Jesus's body had God merely wafted Jesus as a spirit to heaven there would be there would have been no objective proof of Christ's sonship to the contrary the continuing presence of the body in the tomb would have shown Jesus a fraud and a liar in fact the very purpose behind the open tomb was so that man could go in and see the Lord was risen indeed, not so Jesus could come out. The bodily resurrection of the Lord provided empirical evidence that Jesus was the Son of God, of which the apostles were made witnesses. Okay, there's some verses there. The bodily resurrection of Christ thus served a unique purpose that makes Jesus' resurrection unlike our own. The Hebrew writer speaks of the resurrection of Christ when he states that Jesus, in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Hebrews 5, 7. Notice the days of his flesh are set over against Jesus' present from when he is ascended into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Jesus is no longer in fleshly form and it is unto this hope that believers aspire. Not the reunion of their spirits with their earthly bodies okay and then someone will argue that in this verse in Corinthians when Paul says that we're raised or we're sown in, in corruption raised in corruptible we're sown uh, physically raised spiritually he'll try to say that spiritual in this sense means um, like the same as uh, in these verses it says like the spiritual man judgeth all things yet he is judged of no man so they're trying to say that spiritual means the driving force or controlling principle in the individual's lives not their material or immaterial state but the context of that passage in Corinthians refutes this okay because he's talking about different bodies and stuff uh, you know there's a terrestrial and um, celestial and all that stuff let's see here says a better view however is that the term spiritual in first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 44 is substantive not qualitative and that the body of the resurrection will be intangible and material and eternal the spiritual man has a physical body only because he has not yet put it off in death upon the death of the body the inner man lives on clothed with the spiritual body of life but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16 for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved we have a building of God and a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens made without hands eternal in the heavens for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven the earthly house is the fleshly body of this material realm upon death it is replaced by a spiritual and immaterial house from heaven since it is from heaven it is clearly not the self-same earthly body put off in death and the resurrection we will be spirit beings with spiritual bodies 
Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. We will be as the angels, Matthew chapter 22, verse 30, intangible, immaterial, imperishable, and eternal. Amen. Hallelujah. Doesn't that sound great? That sounds like what the Bible teaches to me, okay? Scriptures for the resurrection of the flesh. So he goes through and he, he mentions scriptures that people will try to use to defend this uh, future physical body. I'm not going to go over all this. But here's scriptures against the resurrection of the flesh. I kind of want to look at some of these. And I'm not sure if I'll agree with all these. I haven't looked over it before the study. But let's just look over some of these together. The scriptures against them. Against it, okay? Um, let's see. These above verses are relied upon by advocates of a resurrection of the flesh. As we have seen, the idea of a physical resurrection is completely away from virtually every scripture cited. The notion has no more basis than the fanciful notion of man's eternal state subsisting in a material new created order. Let us now look at a few verses pointing to the resurrection of the spirit and the inheritance of the saints in the immaterial realm of heaven. Although dozens of verses might be marshaled, space does not allow us to consider more than a few. Okay. Hmm. Okay, the first one's Luke chapter 23, verse 43. Verily I say unto thee, this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. These words spoken by the Lord in the immediate reaches of death bore the promise of the first resurrection of the spirit in Hades paradise. Since physical bodies are not no part of the first resurrection, what basis is there to believe they will be part of the se second resurrection of the soul to heaven? Okay. Um, And it says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse, 30, verse 50. So I believe when Jesus was speaking to the thief here, he was saying, you know, you'll be with me in heaven. It wasn't some special part in hell that doesn't exist. That's a false doctrine as well. And I don't know what he's talking about, the first and second resurrection. I think that there's one resurrection after death um i mean there's the resurrection to life and then there is those who are sent to eternal torment i don't know if that's considered a resurrection or not but uh that's the second death but so so i might not agree with some of his stuff on here but the, basically the the major gist of this um uh, study is pretty good what is this? John chapter 3, verse 5 through 7. Looks like he messed up on that one. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, yep, this is John. And of the Spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. This verse shows that there are two natures, one belonging to the kingdom of heaven, one belonging to the earth. The earthly nature and body do not enter the kingdom of God. The spirit does. Okay, so that's kind of a decent verse for that. And we should see that there's so many verses that refute this idea of a future uh, physical body resurrection. And still people might hold on to it and say, well, what about these Old Testament verses and stuff? But, you know, when we have verses that clearly refute it, uh, up here I think he explains probably a lot of that stuff too. So if you have your doubts about this, check out this article yourself and read the rest of it. I'm not going over everything, but in the future I'll do my own better study on this. <sighs> John chapter 4 verse 24 God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. This verse is uh, dispositive to the idea that physical bodies have any part of the kingdom of heaven. In Luke chapter 24 verse 38 Jesus said behold my hands and my feet that it is myself handle me and see for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. Since God is a spirit and spirits do not have flesh and bones. It is axiomatic that God does not have flesh and bone. Christ is now a spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. In the resurrection, 
Christians are to be made like unto Christ and God. Psalms 17:15, Romans 8:29, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 49. Hence we will be spirit beings without flesh and bone. John chapter 6 verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh profits nothing in terms of man's redemption, sanctification, and salvation. It is suitable only for dwelling upon earth, where life is bounded by time and space and consigned to corruption. It is the spirit that is quickened and receives eternal life, not the flesh. Romans chapter 8 verse 10, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. The body is the source of sin and temptation. The flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17, If the flesh is contrary to the spirit, it is hardly possible that it will be saved. If men are able to to, or if men are to be restored to the original state of the creation before the fall, as post-millennialists assert, like Adam, they will be susceptible to sin and temptation arising in the flesh, unless we are prepared to believe the whole race is to be exposed to the risk of a second fall. We must reject this fanciful scheme. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, delivers such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Destruction of the flesh here is best understood in terms of its mortification by denying its affections and lusts. By excommunicating those overtaken in sin, they are brought to shame and repentance, leading to the denial and destruction of the flesh, by thus crucifying the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24, The spirit is restored to purity, suitable unto salvation, the flesh expressly excluded from the spirit's salvation. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44, 49, and 50. Here we go. This is the major one to me. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Here are several plain statements that set the earthly, earthly and fleshly body over against the spiritual and heavenly body. The image of the earthly consists in a natural fleshly body and carnal mind. The image of the heavenly consists in a regenerated mind and immaterial body. The natural and material body of earth is corruptible and the heavenly and immaterial body of the spirit is incorruptible. The promise of the resurrection is of an immaterial body, like unto Christ and the angels of God in heaven. Matthew chapter 22, verse 25. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affection, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The material is visible and temporal. The immaterial is invisible and eternal. Although the outward and material man perish, the inward immaterial man is renewed day by day. The body will perish, but the spirit will inherit eternal life. And I hope that somebody who is watching this, if anybody's watching this, if anybody has rejected, um, you know, what I'm trying to show you today, that the resurrection is only spiritual, I hope that this is clicking to you because this is like, I love how all these verses are brought out here. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Our earthly house refers to our mortal bodies of flesh. This tabernacle refers to this temporal realm. The tabernacle of material heavens and earth. This solution of our earthly house speaks of putting off the body in death. The building of God, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, speaks to our immortal, immaterial, and spiritual bodies. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2 and 3, For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon 
with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. In the resurrection we are clothed with our immaterial and immortal house from heaven, not our fleshly mortal bodies of earth. Naked speaks of putting off the body of flesh and death. Clothed speaks to putting on the spiritual body in the resurrection of life. Hmm. Well, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 through 8, Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. Oh, wait, we want to be with our body, right? Don't we hope for a future bodily resurrection? Oh, wait a second. We're rather, we're willing to be absent from the body. Absent from the body and present with the Lord. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. This body will be destroyed. This uh, corruptible flesh. Okay, we will be raised spiritually. Could the apostle have made it more plain? We would be absent from the body of flesh that we might be at home with the Lord. If in the resurrection we are reunited with the body, we will again be at home in the body and absent from the Lord. Clearly, that is no part of the Christian's hope. Amen. This just has to scream out to you that, whoa. And if you, so if you see that this is wrong and you say, okay, I agree, we're not going to be raised physically, then you have to understand that that's kind of all tied into this premillennial thinking. So that kind of just, that just destroys the whole rapture, you know, post, mid, trip, Pre, it doesn't matter. All that just gets annihilated, basically. Okay. So, I mean, I'm very convinced of this, guys. And I, and I was wrong. Because, you know, I was... It's only been a couple of years since I've been saved. And I've been studying. And, you know, but I continue to study and, and look over things. But, you know, it's a very popular doctrine. It is. It's, it's all over the place. Um... You know, the debate often is usually the timing of the rapture. I've, you know, there's very few teachers that I know of that, that even deny the rapture as a whole, even though they're all out there. But most of the main popular people believe in this rapture thing. So you have to dig a little deeper. You have to really, to, to really search and stuff to find people who, who are teaching the truth, basically. <laughs> so, you know, that's why I got a false teachers page with like hundreds of people on there. And more to be added because you know that's the way that it is and you know I'm being picky about who's going on there I could already have like a thousand people on there okay I'm just putting people that I think specifically should be on there that that you know a lot of people know but basically you know there's so many false teachers out there and I was falsely teaching in the past but you know Thank God I'm seeing more and, and I'm changing this now. So, uh, you know, there's Th Thomas Ice. I used to talk about how he has a good website. It was, um, you know, pre-trib. He teaches the pre-trib rapture. He has tons of articles defending it and everything. And I used to think it was good. It is good somewhat for information, but, I mean, it's false if it's supporting the pre-trib rapture. But, uh, you know, studying everything has, has, you know, you study both sides, even the false stuff. You study that, and you study this, and you kind of find out, and you study the scripture, and you pray, and you kind of find out, you know, what is right. Um, so even, you know, learning what we know is false or whatever can somehow be helpful. But overall, I mean, it's wrong. It's, you know, we need to stand against that. But... <sighs> You know, I sent him emails, and I told him that, you know, the judgment seat of Christ is false, and this loss of rewards doctrine is false and stuff, and he never responded to me. I sent him an email before that and asked him questions about the pre-trib rapture. He responded to me on that, <laughs> but when I started, you know, criticizing his, his views, and I started bringing up points, and I was like, wait a minute, like, I was like, you know, does this teaching of the judgment seat of Christ where Christians can lose rewards, is this necessary 
for the rapture. I mean, because I see that it's not true completely. I'm completely convinced that Scripture does not teach this. And, you know, can I still hold on to a pre-trib rapture? And I tried to for a while, but, you know, once start once so once there's so many holes in the ship and the ship's just sinking, then it's like okay, you know, I gotta get out and and I'm glad that through my searching and stuff, the Lord has led me to websites like this and stuff. And I'm not saying that I'm a preterist, but this website has a lot of interesting, different views from what you're normally gonna get. So it's somewhat helpful. But I'll just continue here. I'm having fun reading these. <sighs> Okay. Um Now. We'll go to Galatians chapter 3 verse 3. Are ye so foolish having begun in the spirit are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Those who hold that the spirits of just men made perfect Hebrews chapter 12 verse 23 must be reunited with the flesh to be complete. And, etern and inherit eternal life, fall under the like condemnation Paul repro reproaches the Galatians with, the completion of the man's salvation is the union of spirit with God in heaven, not being newly clothed upon with bodies of clay. And I like how he's saying that he keeps bringing up bodies of clay because I think that really packs a punch to really get across from you that our bodies are corruptible, uh, these, these are, are temporal bodies, um, this flesh is going to be done away with, and that's a day that we will rejoice in. Okay, so why in the world would we be wanting to be reunited with these corruptible, um, corrupted um, bodies of clay? And, and the, our bodies are going to be dust anyways. You know, it doesn't even make sense to say that people are going to be physically raised, you know? I talked to a pastor about that before, and I think I've already mentioned this in a video, but you know, I'm like, you know, does, is God really going to raise like bodies from the grave or whatever? And, and I'm like, what about, I'm like, what about those who are cremated? You know, they're just ashes. And he's like, well, what about the people who were buried like thousands of years ago? Their, their bodies and their bones, they're all dust also. And I'm like, okay, right. And he's like, well, I just believe God said he'll do it. So he will. So just poof, they'll be raised. Well, they would basically have to have a new body, because they don't have a body. The body is dust, ashes, gone, <laughs> okay? There is no physical body to be raised. It would have to be a new created body, and it doesn't even make sense whatsoever. And I knew that a long time ago, and I can remember talking to the pastor about that, and I was like, this doesn't make sense, you know? But... I was new and stuff, and he's like, you know, well, I just believe it because the Bible says it. And I'm like, well, yeah, okay, I should too. But, you know, when I start reading the Bible myself and, and really studying the stuff, it's like, okay, no. So, there is no physical, bodily resurrection. It is spiritual, and it happens at the moment of death. Okay? So... Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13 and 17, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth, but now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Note that the patriarchs and great men of faith were strangers upon the earth and looked for an heavenly city and country. The notion that man's eternal state is in a material new earth is irresponsible and borders on heretical. It is an express denial of the scripture. And so basically I would believe, yeah, that the new heaven and new earth is also speaking of, of heaven, um, eternal life. But anyways, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23, To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. The spirits of the righteous who died before Christ were not wanting bodies, but atonement, with the blood of sprinkling. Uh, okay. They were made wholly perfect, and the way into heaven opened to them. They need have 
The, what need have they of fleshly bodies, seeing they are already perfect? Moreover, the general assembly of the firstborn of the church are written in heaven, not in new earth. Our conversation is in heaven. Philippians chapter three verse twenty. We are set. We are to set our affections there. Colossians chapter three verse one, because that is the place of our eternal abode. Hebrews chapter twelve verse ten, thirteen and sixteen. And so I agree with that, except for the idea if, uh, you know, I'm going to teach. I've said this many times, but um, there was no second compartment in hell called paradise or, or Hades or whatever you want to look at it. Hell's always been hell. It's always been a place for the condemned to go. Heaven's always been heaven. Uh, paradise is heaven. And so, yeah. Anyways. The Old Testament saints went straight to heaven when they died. So it seems like he's kind of not teaching that here, but that's okay. Um, we're just looking at the fact of how he's refuting the spiritual, or refuting the physical bodily resurrection. First Peter chapter 4, verse 6, For this cause was the gospel preached also unto them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. This verse likely, likely speaks to the saints of prior ages who had the gospel preached to them in types and some multitudes of the old law, although condemned by the law, according to men in the flesh, they were justified by the atoning blood of Christ, that they might live according to the God and Spirit, to be reunited of their bodies of clay, is no part of the divine purpose. Revelation 20, verse 12 and 13, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Here is imagery portraying judgment day. We note that physical bodies are cons conspicuously absent. The dead stand before God. That they are dead signifies they are on the other side of eternity in the realm of the spirit, not upon earth. The sea is symbolic of Tartarus, the place of the lost dead. Hell speaks to paradise. Hell, Hades... Okay, no, um, I don't agree with that, but see, <laughs> hell speaks to paradise. You see, that's that's false. That's when I say no. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing paradise about hell. Anyways, the dead come forth, paradise, uh, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, this last statement I guess I can agree with. It says, The whole transaction is portrayed as occurring in the realm of the spirit, not the flesh, and the immaterial realm of eternity, not time. Okay. So I hope you understood something. I know I read kind of through it kind of fast and maybe kind of weird, but there's so much more to this that I didn't read. You know, he goes over the arguments that people will use, their positive arguments to defend their false teaching. I wanted to look at the ones that just refute it first, but uh, I'm going to go over all this. I'm going to add these verses to the forum eventually. I have this all printed out. I'm going to go over it probably a few times, uh, but I think it's a very helpful article. It's The Resurrection of the Flesh by Kurt M. Simmons. You can just Google that and find it here, I'm sure. Hope that you learned something. Uh, so we need to be looking forward to being with Christ in heaven and, you know, having our spiritual bodies and uh we'll be complete you know at that moment and we'll we'll be like him you know see him as he is we'll be like the angels um you know so i'm just gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna end that here it's about almost a 45 minute video uh but i'm just gonna try to I might just do more random videos like this. I don't know if I'll get on the whiteboard too much, but that's really what I want to do. So, you know, I'm hoping in the future, in the next month or so, I'll put together a really good study on the resurrection, and I'll do that on the whiteboard, and I'll write out all the verses, and, you know, it'll be like over an hour long, and and I'll really go over things even more. But check this out.
Let me know what you think. Leave your comments and everything. And God bless.